Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be working on this old 2002 Saturn. It needs a brake job on the front, so that's what we're going to tackle today. Stick around if you want to see how I do it. Let's do a quick rundown of the parts we're going to use today. Here we have our rotors. In this box, we have a set of four brake pads. We have caliper grease, hardware kit, brake cleaning fluid, safety glasses, gloves, and coffee. Coffee is a must for a job like this. Before we can take the wheel off, we've got to take this wheel cover off. It's held in place with these four bolts. It's just a couple of plastic, they're just plastic nuts, really. And these shouldn't be overly tight. I've got a 19, I believe this is a 19 millimeter socket here. We'll use this same socket to remove the lug nuts. Once those are loose, you can just pull that right off and there are your lug nuts. Now with a 19 millimeter socket on a breaker bar, we can just loosen these lug nuts. They don't need to be real loose. Now that we've got them that far, we can jack up the car and remove the tire. It's good to place the jack in the position suggested by the manual. Once you've raised the car off ground enough, use the jack stand for added safety. Let the car come to rest on the jack stand. With the car safely supported, we can now remove these lug nuts. Again, using the 19 millimeter socket, these should be easy to take off. Put them in a safe place to avoid the Oh, fudge moment. And with that, the tire comes off. Here we have the brake system here, the rotor, the caliper. Here's the back side of the rotor. Looks pretty worn. Not how well, not, don't know how well you can see inside there, but 
I don't see much brake pad. So that's the job for today. What we're going to do is we've got to bust loose the bolts for the caliper and the caliper bracket. Those are on the back side. So we'll put a little bit of uh, penetrating oil on those and see if we can't bust those loose. Now what we've got to do is we've got to loosen the bolts for the caliper. We've got one here and one here. We're going to use a 14 millimeter socket. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. That one looks pretty good too. It's a beautiful day out here today. It's good to just be able to relax and take your time when you're doing a job. So don't have to hurry too much. Well, break time is over. Got to get back to the brake job. Once you get this, the caliper slide pins out, the caliper should just come right off. Like so. Okay. Now we're going to press this piston in with a C-clamp and some wood. That'll be the next thing to do. For now, I gotta hang it up out of the way. So I wanna hang this caliper on this piece of wire here so that way there's no stress down here on the brake line. That should be okay right there. The caliper piston needs to be recessed inside the housing of the caliper. Now this one looks pretty good. I don't see any wetness anywhere, so it leads me to believe that it's okay as far as its seal is concerned. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a block of wood across here and a C-clamp and we're going to slowly push this piston back into the caliper housing. Now as I tighten this C-clamp, you should see the caliper piston recess back into the caliper housing. I'm not going to go too fast. Okay. 
I'm going to go a little bit and stop. A little bit more and stop. And I'll just repeat this process until that caliper piston is recessed all the way into the housing. Remember, your brake system is under pressure. And so you don't want to do this too quickly. There is the possibility of a rupture. You just take your time. That's all the way in. Now we can remove the C-clamp and the piece of wood. And just like earlier, we want to hang the caliper out of the way. Okay, with the caliper safely out of the way, your brake pad should just come right out. And as you can see, There ain't hardly anything left on them pads. So, they definitely need to be replaced for sure. This brake system uses these little clips right here and here. And sometimes your brakes will come with them, sometimes they won't. If they're not in too bad a shape, sometimes you can reuse them. I was able to get them from my brake pads. So I'm gonna hang on to these, but I've got new ones. So these don't look like they're in bad, bad shape. They could be reused in a pinch if you needed to, but since I've got new ones, I'm just gonna use what I have. Now we've got the pads removed, we've got the hardware removed. Now we can remove this caliper bracket. So we've got some bolts, one up here and one down here. Let's get to doing those. I'd like to use a ratchet for this, but I don't think I can get my ratchet in there, so I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter wrench. Suckers in there pretty good. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I'm going to have to try to get at this another angle. Well, I was able to get a socket in there. Well, I have to admit my stupidity. For whatever reason, I didn't think to turn the wheel so that I could get to that screw back there, that bolt. Yeah, that bolt right there. I didn't even think to turn the wheel so that I could use my breaker bar to get to that bolt. How stupid.
Wow. That was so much easier. Imagine that. Wow. What a bonehead. Well, so now that we've got the caliper mounting bracket off, we can take off the rotor. Here we go. Well, the wheel hub, it's pretty rusty. Threads look pretty good on the studs here. I'd like to be able to clean that up, but I really don't have a way of doing that right now, so it's just going to have to be what it is. I'll be sure to put some anti-seize both on the studs and on the uh, caliper when it seats against the hub. That way it doesn't get seized on there. Okay, I did uh, take the opportunity to use some sandpaper and just kind of clean up the rust as best I could with what I have here. So now, <clears throat> this is ready for the new rotor. Get out the old redneck knife. Alright, there we have it. But we can't just throw it on. It needs to be cleaned. It's got some sort of a, a rust uh, inhibiting uh, film on it that keeps it from rusting and shipping. And uh, of course these things come on a slow boat from China. So we gotta clean it all up with some brake. Brake parts cleaner. Do make sure that you're using this in a well-ventilated area. It's not something that you need to be inhaling uh, really at all. It's almost unavoidable though when you're doing this kind of work. So, too much of that. I'm going to be a happy camper. Oh, that's got a pretty strong aroma to it. That'll make you happy real quick. All right, so that's clean. And so we have a little bit of anti-seize lubricant here. couple of dabs here and then I'll smear it out. And that should work right there. That should be all right. From this point forward, we're doing everything in reverse. So the last thing we took off was the rotor. So the first thing we're gonna put on is the rotor. That's just going to hang there. I suppose I should mention that uh, you really want to make sure that everything is the same. You want to make sure that your rotor is the same diameter, the new rotor. You want to make sure that the, obviously the bolt hole pattern is the same. You want to make sure that this overall thickness is the same. So all in all, you just really want to take a look and just make sure that all your parts are truly uh, what you need. The rotor is on. Now it's time for the caliper mounting bracket. Before I put these bolts back in there, I want to put some anti-seize on them. All 
think that should be okay. And let's get this thing mounted. Now there's probably a torque specification on these and I have no idea what that torque specification is. Here's a new clip. Okay. See how nice and shiny that is? Here's the old one. And like I said, this could probably get cleaned up and used again. But I went ahead and bought new ones. Now one thing to note is that the brake pad is going to ride against this surface right here and here. So what we want to do is we want to take some brake caliper grease. We're going to put some grease in here, put some grease in here. Don't want to get it on the rotor, obviously. And uh, that will help your brake pads as they move back and forth. So, you have an upper and lower, they're the same, and slide it around the rotor, and it'll clip in place. Like so. If you get any on the rotor, make sure you wipe it off right away. See? So you've got an upper and a lower. Now the pads can go on. Now the pads go in pretty easy. These are a uh, ceramic pad. They were a little bit more expensive, but I guess they're supposed to last a little bit longer. So anyhow, it has a uh, sensor here that lets you know uh, when it's supposed to squeal and let you know when it's time to change your pads. So these are going to go in at an angle like so. You you're going to put them you're going to put them in like this and then seat it like so. And this notch here is going to go around here and the notch on the bottom will go around here. You just kind of finesse it in there a little bit like that. Okay. And the back side is very similar. You'll have to take my word for it because I'm not going to videotape it. So we'll get the back side put in and get the caliper put on. All right, we got the new pads in, and now we can uh, get to putting the caliper back on. But before we do, I want to take a minute to talk about these pins here. These are the caliper slide pins. One of them goes in the top, this larger diameter. One goes up here in the top, and then one goes down here in the bottom. They're not the same diameter. If you look at them side by side, you can definitely see that one is smaller than the other. Okay. So, before we put these in, we're going to use some caliper grease on them, and uh, that will help them operate the way they're supposed to, as the caliper does what it's supposed to. So, let's get the caliper, put some anti-seize on the bolts, and remount this bad boy. All right, here we have our caliper. 
and because we have pushed the piston back in it shouldn't be too bad to go back on so we're going to slide it over the, the new brake pads get these boots positioned where they need to go okay and that'll sit right there for just a moment while I get some grease on the pins. This is the bottom pin. Kind of wiggle that around a little bit. And we can get it started in the, the threads. Do the same thing to the top pin. Kind of get that boot around there. All right. Get a little bit of anti seize on there. Let's tighten those up. Again with the 14 millimeter socket. <clears throat> All right. New rotor. New pads. Got everything all greased up the way that it's supposed to. The only thing left to do now is put the wheel back on. Put these lug nuts on here. This will do that back on. I want to make sure that this notch here, though, is lined up with the air nozzle, the, the valve there. Go slow when you let the pressure down. Well, that's a wrap for rotors and pads on a 2002 Saturn SL1. The other side is going to be the exact same way. I'm not going to film that. But anyway, if you found this video to be helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. I've got more videos that you might find helpful, so you might want to subscribe. Uh, please do leave comments. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to hear your thoughts on what I could have done better. Um, it's a pretty simple job, so it didn't take a whole lot. Uh, so at any rate, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, like, subscribe, and comment. We'll see you next time.